All right, welcome to the channel, Carl Eckwurzel. How you doing, Carl? I'm good. How you doing, Bose Master General? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. It's great to see you. Good to see you look you. great. I'm feeling great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you've been staying healthy. Trying to, you know, with the with the pandemic and all, but I got the the old Peloton right here, ready behind me, just getting ready to ride right after this. Who's that on the seat there? That's the um, Dia de los Bravos. He's occupying my seat right now, but after this, I'm gonna have to kick him right on out. Absolutely, that's yours. All right, so um, love to take a take a moment to get uh, the fans get, get to know you a little bit better, right? You're one of the more beloved players on the team. You're a big personality, and I think people would like <laughs> like to see you shine. So, I want you, uh, you know, let everybody know where you're from, where you went to school, maybe how you uh, got into Ultimate. Yeah, so um, I'm. Born and raised in Decatur, Georgia, um, where I went to Lakeside High School. I was a part of uh, some of the people there. I played baseball, basketball, swimming and diving, um, and then kind of started Frisbee my junior year of high school. Well, maybe sophomore year of high school. I uh, just started the team at Lakeside where we'd only play Grady, uh, Grady, Paideia, Collins Hill, and like Brookwood. I think Brookwood was starting to have a team in Grayson High School. Um, and those were like kind of like the main players that we played or the main teams that we played. And then I was playing baseball in high school and then was fortunate enough to get a scholarship to play at Reinhardt and played baseball for two years and then started playing ultimate or started kicking back ultimate my sophomore year summer, which then led me to transfer to Georgia State University where I started playing with Georgia State Underground. So that's where I played my college ball, if you will, um, with Georgia State Underground, which was the best team. I had an absolute blast with them. So it was pretty good. Love those state guys. So uh, life took you up into New England after that, right? Mm -hmm. that. So I went to, uh, I moved up to Stamford, Connecticut to work for WWE World Wrestling Entertainment. Um, while I was there, I kind of was back and forth with Ultimate. I didn't really know if I wanted to play anymore. It was just something that I had a lot of fun with. Uh, tried out for a couple of teams in New York. Um, some of the, it wasn't Pony. It was like at the time, the team below Pony was called Young Bloods. Got cut from Young Bloods. Um, then I tried out for two mixed teams called Seven Express. Got cut from them twice. Um, and then got cut from the Empire my first year. And then was like, yeah, you know what? Ultimate's not that fun. Uh, <laughs> Ultimate's not that great. Um, then moved up, found a team up in uh, Bristol, Connecticut, which we kind of talked about where ESPN is. Uh, and they had a team called Night's Watch, who I played with, uh, which are now Colt 45, who I played with for one summer. And then kind of got lucky and, and got onto Boston Slow White, a uh, mixed team. I finally went mixed, and I, I really never looked back in the mixed game, so. Yeah, that's kind of like my whole entire like moving to the Northeast and trying to get acclimated with not only work, but with Ultimate. And it led me to a national championship and, you know, it, it, it got me to where I am today. So I'm very, very appreciative of that time up there. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I'm sure it was like the right team at the right time. You, you know, you need a little time to develop your skills, to get ready for the high level. And maybe, you know, when you try for slow white, you were just getting there. Yeah, for sure. And that's the thing. It's like, you know, there are a lot of players who just have that it factor, you know, like your Jimmy Mickles, your, your, your Chris Cotchers, those type of people who just have it, like they're just, they'll make every team. Um, but, you know, then there are some people who just have to work hard and, and make their living just constantly trying to get better and better and better. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to work my keister off and get to play in the national championship and then also get to play in the AEDL, which is the highest form of Vulcan that you can get at. So tell us about the WWE. I'm sure you got some stories. What did you do for them? Yeah, I mean, I worked for the social media team, uh, which was the, the, the launch of the WWE Network. So I was primarily with the WWE Network. The WWE Network was a uh, kind of like a pay-per-view type thing where you won't have to actually go and buy each pay-per-view. You could actually buy it on the network, plus get every TV show, every wrestling event that had ever happened since like 1960. So like that was kind of like a dream job for me and for me to get up there. It was, it was a long process to get up to WWE. I mean, you work down here, you, you I had a job at the W Atlanta Buckhead, which was a hotel. And I met a guy there who it's a crazy story because it's how I got to WWE was pretty interesting. Just from this guy named Bill Hirsch who worked for WWE. I was working the front desk and I was like, Hey man, you work for WWE. That's really cool. He goes, yeah, I work for the uh, sales team. I was like, well, 
here's my, here's my contact information. I'd love to stay in contact with you. Weeks, months go by. He sends me tickets to a live event in Atlanta. And he says, hey, just so you know, we have this thing opening up called the WWE Network. Do you want in? I was like, well, I mean, I kind of did go to school for that. So why not? Why not give it a shot? So I sent in my resume. I uh, had like three interviews up in Stanford, Connecticut, where it was pouring snow. I'm talking five feet. Like it was, it was hitting with like, like a huge nor'easter. And I got in somehow. Like I flew in, got in right when I got in. And that process of starting out with, you know, not being really well known at the W, but working my way up through my communications and got me to WWE where I was a part of the network team. And as you know, the social media team at WWE or anything social related is the number one in the world. So it's like, if you make it to WWE, I mean, you basically are living on the top of the world, specifically in, in sports entertainment, but also just in the media conglomeracy as well. Yeah, they're great storytellers. They do a good job of uh, engaging fans at, at all the levels. We can learn a lot from them. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like with hustle and everything, there's so many options that we can go down or so many different opportunities that we can chase just from like the Twitter side, the, the Facebook side, the, the Instagram side, all of these platforms as similar as they are, are very, very different at the end of the game, like at the end of the day. So if, if you're able to crack into one, just because you're doing it one way, it might not necessarily work for another. So finding that, finding that, that, that niche market within each social media platform is, is key. And I think Hustle is doing a great job on, on Facebook and, and Instagram. Twitter might need a little bit of work, but you know, that's, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. That's for sure. I'll admit that might be a strategic decision on yeah. my part. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you also have an idea for a show you want to run out this spring. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So, you know, my fiance, Amy and I, who, who are, we're getting married on April 24th, she was sitting here and we were watching Comedians in Cars getting coffee with Jerry Seinfeld. And he was doing this really good episode with Martin Short. And Martin Short's one of my favorite people in the world because he did a, uh, a character called Jiminy Glick. And Jiminy Glick is this big fat guy who'd walk around and talk like this. And I was just like, I could do that. That is something I, I, I could absolutely do. But rather than being in cars, since I'm an avid cyclist, I was like, why not get our best ultimate players who are also cyclists who actually like ride through Atlanta to do quick little interviews, stop at little coffee shops, stop at local shops just to a give us the content that we need, but also to possibly promote a local business. Like if we went to Pont city market, we could talk to uh, the five, what is it? Five daughters bakery, which is the, uh, the donut shop. Like, Hey, we're going to go get donuts here. Would you mind? Like we shot like here. Would you guys be comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like I still think it's a great show and we have, you know, some players who really, really want to do it. And it's just, you know, kicking your boots and making sure that it's able to go. But, when everybody's working full time, it's, it's kind of tough to swing. But once we start getting a little bit slower at work, I'm definitely going to kick it off. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. And uh, if you're watching and you get an idea of a place where Carl should drop by for one of his episodes, drop it in the comments. I'm Please. sure he'll, he'll make an appearance for you. Mm -hmm. All right. So you've uh, you switched from the WWE now. You're back in Atlanta. Uh, what's life like now? Life is, life is pretty good, um, all things considered. Uh, I work for Wellstar Health System, where I do kind of all their the digital field and everything like that. We we launched our new brand name or our whole new brand in March, which was a very difficult time releasing a brand new like everything from how how we how we are known. We're now known as not healthcare but people care, um, and we had to push that through the market while also fighting a pandemic, while also uh, launching the one of the largest uh, emergency departments in the country at Kinestone, and you're having to balance all of that that has been a very difficult um very difficult time but you know with with that much work that had to be done and you're working in in the healthcare sector where we have so many frontline heroes out there right now uh working at all of our 11 hospitals five health parks 250 plus urgent cares throughout like the northwest georgia you know there are oh, that, that's a nice little plug well star more than healthcare people you know, care well trained um, <laughs> you don't want to say anything thanks um but yeah, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. You have to get a lot of communication out to our patients. And, you know, we see a lot of patients just because we're all over the place and making sure that our patients have the most up-to-date information from the CDC and from the health department. That's our number one initiative is making sure that they know what is going on. And that comes first through us. 
Yeah, that's that's something we all see now, right? Where everyone's reading all the stuff on the internet about COVID, COVID vaccines, and you know people are taking all that information in differently. But it's really, really um, important for people at the hospital level, but also at the you know federal level, like the CDC, to make sure that the right information is getting out to people and uh, and they're acting, you know, making smart choices with the right information. All right, so let's uh, let's switch gears a little bit to ultimate. Um, for for those who haven't uh, you know seen you play or aren't familiar with your game, how would you describe what you do? For the hustle i'm I, i'm more of a defend i'm on the d line so you know the the old it's like the um it's like the linemen in football like they get the dirty they get dirtied up they have to do all the stuff whereas you have like austin and you know going around tossing thing 80 yards you know what i mean easy peasy but yeah the d line is that's where you're going to see me at i'm going to be a physical brute who likes to play very very tight against uh the opposing team while also getting up as high as i possibly can there are there's specific aspects of my game that still need to be tuned up. You know, my throwing is definitely a, a liability. I, I'll be honest there, but I've been working on it this off season very, very um, heavily. As you know, I throw both lefty and righty. Uh, so that's, that, that always helps me out. My flick is backhands from both sides. I have to throw black. I, that's all I have are backhands. Anybody's like, Hey, Cole, throw a flick. I'm like, are you 10 yards away? Okay. That, that might be realistic, but if you're going 20, or a lead pass, you might want to you might want to know your thrower better. <laughs> but your throw your throw does have touch on it. You know you got that baseball you know touch to it. Yeah, I, I do got that pitcher style still. So a hammer, a hammer would definitely be good. Uh, my hammers are very very good. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's it's basically where Miranda puts us. If we're going for a zone, I'm going to play that that deep position. I don't normally play in the cup or the wings, but I will play that six and seven position right in the back. Um, but if we are playing man, I'm going to play physical against whoever I'm going up against. If you're, you know, six, seven, like Henry Fisher, or you're, you know, five, seven, five, eight, like Bobby Fay. I mean, Bobby lay, whatever, uh, you know, you have to be ready for that. Yeah. But you have to be prepared for all that. I mean, you, you're going up against the tall. So you have to be ready for to do jump balls. If you're going up against the handlers, you better be having quick feet. And you know, I'm, I'm 215 pounds. So it is kind of difficult going up against the small guys, but that's what I'm kind of working towards and what I'm going to be hopefully better at this season. Yeah, and, and you, you alluded to this, but you're, you're kind of built more like a linebacker, right? You've got a yes, little yeah. bit of a wrestler's body, but you, know, you have good quickness and speed and you have good jumping ability and you don't mind being physical. And so, you know, maybe if somebody like Antoine Davis is going to take you on a, like a 70-yard run, you know, that's advantage to Antoine. But like, Well, thank God he's on our team, you know? <laughs> Right, but if you might have to use somebody else there. <laughs> but if you're bumping and grinding with him in, you know, in the stack, then yeah. you, know, you have a chance to bump him off his line and to affect his game. Same thing with a smaller handler, right? So you have size, but you also have the quickness and athleticism to kind of utilize that size on a lot of players. Yeah, and you can use that to your advantage to push them in the direction that you want them to go, as opposed to them having their way with you. You can say, you know what, I'm going to force you under, for and knowing that I can still get there. Not, not playing like obviously five yards off, but I'm still close to them enough where I could probably get the under if I need to. Um, you're actually making them choose where they have to go. You're making them have to choose where you're going to be going. Like you're occupying the space that they want to get to. Uh, that's a win for you if they don't get that first shot. Like they're the five in the stack and they're making that big cut under. And I'm stopping that. They're at stall count four. So they're already starting to get higher up in the stall count, trying to push them back into that recycle, back to the number one spot. So – you know, there, there are different aspects of my game that, that still need to be tuned, but that right there is probably my number one attribute. Yeah, that's what the, I think fans can count on is some big athletic plays and some good physical defense. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you, you, want, you want to see us out there. You want to see, <laughs> you want to see these guys right here, okay? They, these are what bring the, the fans to the seat. So, hey, did you know, you hopefully – over the offseason? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shut up, you know. <laughs> yeah, I did. So what? What are you going to do about it? No, man. Uh, you're looking great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, hopefully we're going to have a season this year. Uh, hopefully we're going to get the news pretty soon that we're, you know, got the green light to move forward. I know that a lot of people in Atlanta have been working hard. What are you looking most forward to, uh, you know, with a year off of ultimate getting back into it? What's, what are you looking forward to? I'm just looking forward to see all the teammates. Like, you know, I, I'm a big team player. I have a, a lot of energy and you know, it being around these guys, like it's my favorite thing in the world, you know, like just, just talking, just, just mouthing at each other at practice. Um, making sure that, you know, we're still following the, the Department of Health guidelines, following the CDC guidelines. 
and being able just to get back out to practice because I miss seeing everybody. I, I miss seeing our coaches and, you know, it's going to take some time, obviously, you know, we've, we've been through a year so far. I think it's, we're coming up to the anniversary or we just passed the anniversary of the first COVID diagnosis. So um, it, it, it's all, it all comes down to the CDC and, and the department of health. And, and I know that you're doing a great job at keeping us um, in line with, with what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish. So as long as we have that, that kind of camaraderie to hold each other accountable, I think that's going to be the most, mm-hmm. most advantageous for us to get back to practice safely and to make sure that everybody that we're going to be playing will be playing safely as well until they go, until they go on an under and I come bid right behind you get that disc, give me that disc right there. But, yeah, but before been, that happens, we have to follow those guidelines. Yeah. I've been encouraged at how, you know, people have been uh, taking it seriously and they understand that, you know, we as the hustle kind of set the tone for some of the other people who play the sport in the area. Uh, and that, you know, playing this game is a privilege and, you know, like, yeah, it's been a year, but that is the vaccine doesn't know. I mean, the virus doesn't know what time it is. Right. And so sure. getting out there is going to happen when it's supposed to happen. And we are going to be grateful to get out there, but we're also going to do everything we can in our power to make sure we do so safely and, and soon. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm psyched too. It's hard to, you know, main, you know, to keep your excitement under wraps, but I think it's coming soon. I'm just waiting for waiting for that good news to drop. Yeah, and I can't wait. And you know, there there a big thing is, and just a shout out to all the hustle players who've been working during the off season. And you know, last year, I mean, it was just it was a bummer last year when we couldn't you know play anymore. But we all understood what it meant, what what the reasoning was behind it. You know, it still hurt, but knowing that our team is safe and that we've been working really really hard in the off season, and just seeing what type of improvements we've been doing just individually. And what we're trying to, I hope what we're trying to do is just so that that individual effort can still be molded into a team effort, uh, which, you know, hopefully we'll see in the AUDL season. And if not, you'll see it in 2022, but let's not, let's not think that far ahead. Let's try and think right now, but yeah, I'm, I'm very, very privileged and very honored to be with this team and to see everybody putting in the effort. And I hope that that effort will be translated onto the field. Sounds good. Well, let us know whenever you're ready to start your, your show and whenever you get a title, we can start yeah. own, your own channel, you know, your own handle, whatever, and we can promote that. So I really hope so, you know, and, and, you know, we got a lot of great, great writers out there. So John Faye, if you're watching, just bring it, baby, just bring it. I'm ready for you. <laughs> Who's going to be on your guest list other than John Faye? Oh God. I mean, John Faye, obviously number one, Sun Choi well, I mean, that's, um, that's a, that's a given. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's shooting, that's shooting fish in a barrel right there. That's easy. That's easy money. Um, I know Thor used to be a pretty avid runner or sorry, rider. So maybe we can get him out there. He'll talk to me, you know, get some, get some fun conversations going with him. Um, TJ, our coach. So we'll have like coaches in there as well as players mm-hmm. being interviewed by me. God, hope you really enjoy that one. I'll be the Jimmy Glick. Oh, so I'm just going to well, be you're gonna have a good time and we're going to catch it on camera. Yes, I hope so. Great. All right, man. Well, I can't wait. Thank you. Thank you, Bozy. And I, I appreciate this. And, you know, I look forward to, to, to wearing the hustle jersey and, and making Atlanta proud. So thank you very much for everything. And I hope you all have a, uh, a very, very great time watching us. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. We'll talk to you soon. Yep. See you, Bozy.